So who are the two witnesses in Revelation? That's what we're going to take a look into in today's video, so let's get started. Hey everyone, Israel Kimmel here from In That Word, and before we get into today's video, I'm really curious and really want your insights into what you think about these two witnesses in Revelation. So let me know in the question section below the video who you think the two witnesses are. One thing I'll say from right off the bat in regards to the two witnesses is generally you're going to go one of two ways when it comes to the two witnesses, ironically, no pun intended, okay? And generally what's going to happen is you're going to have one category which is going to say okay allegorical and you're going to have another category which is going to take it more literal okay and based on how you view the two witnesses okay based on what you on, on what you view the scripture saying about them is going to generally determine where you end up on on that graph okay so what we're going to read first and foremost is taken from revelation 11 verse 3 and it's going to say these two witnesses okay one of the things they're going to do is they're going to prophesy Okay, let's put verse 3, okay, it says they're going to prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, okay, or three and a half years pretty much, in sackcloth, okay. What else does it say? It says, these two are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, okay, before God. Two olive trees plus candlesticks. Before God verse 4 what else does it say if any man will hurt them fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies okay so fire proceeds out of their mouth what else? Six, they can shut up the heaven. So it rains not, okay? They can turn water to blood. What else? And when they finish their testimony, the beast that sends out of the pit, pit should kill them, okay? So, they die. Now, their dead bodies are going to lie in the street. Um, so, dead bodies. Okay, what else? Everyone's going to see their dead bodies three and a half days. Um, should not suffer their bodies to put to be engraved, so they shall dwell upon the earth, shall re rejoice and send gifts to each other, etc. Spirit of life is going to enter into them. Okay, spirit enters them. And they ultimately get caught up okay so we look at all of this information here okay they prophesy for basically three and a half years in sackcloth and ashes okay they're described as the two olive trees and two candlesticks before that stand before god fire proceeds out of their mouth they're able to shut up the heavens okay 
no rain. They're able to turn water to blood. Okay? They die. Their dead bodies, okay, are seen. Then ultimately the spirit spirit enters into them and they go up to be with the Lord. Okay? Now, you can take all of this stuff and you can say to yourself, well, is this prophecy allegorical? It's not real. Or is it literal? Okay? They're going to do this for a certain amount of time in sackcloth. Okay? Type of garment. Two olive trees, two candlesticks that stand before the before God. Now, this could be allegorical. Two candlesticks, etc. This could just be literal as well. Okay, as in they're two candlesticks, two olive trees. That's a way of describing them. Okay, metaphorically speaking, metaphorically speaking, describing real people. Fire proceeds out of their mouth. Now, fire literally doesn't proceed out of people's mouth, so this could be allegorical. But we also know this could actually be literal too. Why? Because of a person that you should know from the Old Testament called Elijah. Okay? To my knowledge, Elijah is the only person we see in the scripture that is given that gift able to shut up the heaven so it doesn't rain they stop the heaven so it doesn't rain I'd say this is more of a literal thing okay why Elias was a man subject to like passions and he prayed earnestly that it shouldn't rain and it didn't rain it goes on to say in the book of James okay Elias for those of you who don't under know that is Elijah okay this is why we know it could be literal and it, we can't just say yes this is just guaranteed allegorical why because we've seen this actually happen before okay turn water to blood can you turn water to blood is that allegorical well, in most cases it would be, but what do we know? It could be allegorical. It could also be literal. Why? Because we've seen this previously before. Moses, in the book of Exodus. Okay? One of the plagues he did was he turned the water to blood. Okay? Another thing, which... I won't even mention that in this other video. I was going to highlight another person who done something like this, similar to this, but I'll, I'll leave that for another video. They die. Is it going to be an allegorical kind of death? I don't think so. Why? Because one, it seems like we're dealing with pe actual people here. Two, it says they, they're killed and the people see their dead bodies in the streets and they rejoice and they actually see their bodies go up. Okay. I'd say it's more literal. Okay. Dead bodies, I just mentioned that. Same thing up here. And the spirit enters them. Okay. So does the spirit enter? Is this some allegorical, some not, it's not really real. It's something else. It could be. Could it be literal? Yes, it could. Because we've seen all the way through the scripture the spirit and the people okay um, going back all the way to the beginning of the book of the bible to put the bible genesis okay and man breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul okay so we've seen the spirit in one way shape or form whether it's just the breath of life or whether it's actually the holy spirit of god and the people okay people be filled with the Holy Ghost so 
based on what we've done here, I personally tend to be more literal with this kind of stuff. Okay, I'm not one of those people that says everything in the Bible is lit. You take it literally. No, um, God is a master author, and just like any author today who has um, figures of speech and metaphors and similes and all that kind of stuff, there's loads of that in the Scripture too. I just tend to take what we're reading here more literal. Why? Because a lot of this stuff we've seen before. So are you telling me, Israel, that the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah? Perhaps, okay? Perhaps it's Moses and Elijah. Well, we aren't ever going to know until we actually get to this period in time, okay? That's what should be said, um, fundamentally. When we get there, let's sit back and enjoy the ride and see who they actually are. But the reason I'd lean, if I if I was asked, okay, Israel, who do you seriously think these two witnesses are? Do you think it's some allegorical thing um, representing someone else? Or do you think this is two literal men? I'd obviously sway first and foremost to literal. I'd say, you know what, I actually think these are two literal witnesses, okay? Secondly, I'd say, okay, who do I think they are? Well... I definitely think one of them is definitely Elijah. Why would you think one of them is definitely Elijah? Because Elijah, okay. he didn't die. Okay, God took Elijah to heaven. Okay. And this is my poor attempt at drawing flames of fire around a chariot. Okay. God took Elijah up to heaven in a chariot of fire. And not only did Elijah not die, Elijah shut up the heaven so it didn't rain. We see that in the book of Kings. And we also have, I quoted most of the scripture from James, which highlights that. Moses turned water to blood in the Exodus. Okay. So those are the main reasons. Because some of these signs and these descriptions we have of these people, okay, point to Moses and Elijah. Okay. Now, one of the things for me early on when I first kind of thought about this was I kind of said to myself, the scripture says man's appointed to, <laughs> it's appointed unto a man to die once. Okay. Then come to judgment. So for a little while, I was hung up with Moses. Mm, Moses died. Okay. Um, and again, we don't know who these people are categorically, whether this is actually a literal or metaphorical, allegorical. I believe it's literal. So the scripture says man's appointed to, unto death, to death once. Yes, that's true. But there's loads, let me not say loads of people. There's a handful of people through the scripture that died and were brought back to life. Okay. And would have died a second time. Okay. So that kind of, that's the first thing. And when I used to think that, I used to say to myself, well, if it's not Moses... Let's say, let's do it here. Wild card. Enoch, okay. Enoch from the book of Genesis, Genesis 5, is a, another man that didn't die, okay. Now, the problem or uh, uh, something to consider with Enoch is, we don't know that he did any of these signs, shutting up the heavens, any of these kind of things. We do know that he was a prophet. How do we know that? Not from any extrinsic book. We know from the book of Jude, where Jude says, Enoch, he leaves the seventh from Adam, he says, or the eighth from Adam, the seventh from Adam prophesied of the Lord of Jesus Christ's second coming okay now what does that tell us that tells us that Enoch before the flood <laughs> had foresight of this particular time the book of Revelation 
because he prophesied of these things. So was he prophesying of these of these things because he was going to be there as one of the witnesses, as two people that God took up to heaven before they died? Could he be the, the wild card? If it wouldn't, if it wasn't Elijah and Moses, in my opinion, I'd say the wild card would be take Moses out, put Eli- put Enoch in, because both Enoch and Elijah both didn't die physically. Okay, both went to heaven, and that could be where the two olive trees and the two candlesticks before God comes into play. They were both prophets. Okay, which is the main vocation. But why do I lean more towards Enoch and Moses, to Elijah and Moses? Okay, a couple of things I've highlighted the book of Jude, which pinpoints some things about Enoch. It, the book of Jude is also pinpoints one thing about Moses. Okay, the devil contended with Michael for what? Let me know in the comment section below what the devil and Michael were contending for each other over. Moses' body. Why did the devil want Moses' body? Was it because he was going to be one of the two witnesses? Perhaps. Okay. Another reason why I would tend to fall um, or tend to believe in Elijah and Moses. Okay. What happened in the book of Matthew? One day it talks about how Jesus went up to a mountain and I believe he took Peter, James and John. I can't remember if Andrew was there at that time. And it says, he was transfigured in front of them. Okay. Jesus' glory came out. And who appeared? Two men appeared. Who were the two men? Moses and Elijah. What did they talk about? What does it say? Okay. What does it say about Moses and Elijah? And all of the things we discussed, the signs, the vocation, the contention for Moses' body, Moses and Elijah appearing, and this in, in, even in itself can take down the fact that Moses died already because Moses is here again, okay? in the New Testament time. And that's why if you ask me if I had to pick, I'd say the two witnesses in Revelation are Moses and Elijah. Now again, as we've put here, this is a case why it could be Moses and Elijah. And our wild card, as I've already said, is Enoch. We could be completely wrong, okay? This isn't something to lose sleep over, in my opinion, who these two witnesses are. This is just one of those scenarios in the scripture for me personally, where I look at this and say, I can't, well, let me not say I can't wait. I look forward to seeing who these two witnesses are and seeing how close or how far we actually were to actually the truth, okay? This isn't something that we fight in other believers about. Oh no, it's not Moses, it's not Elijah. This isn't literal men. This is some sort of allegorical thing or some metaphorical thing. It's really not that serious. But this is why I personally would consider taking the more literal view and taking the view that it's Moses and Elijah. Okay, Because after Elijah went up and after Moses died, we've seen them again in the New Testament window. Okay. 
Another thing I didn't even mention. Malachi. Okay. Malachi, I believe it's five. I will send Elijah before the great and dreadful or time day of the Lord. Okay. John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Okay. That's why when they asked him, are you Elijah? What did he say? Are thou Elias? He said, no. Why? Because he wasn't physically Elijah. But the angel Gabriel, if I remember correctly, said to Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, dad, that your son would come in the spirit of Elias. And that's where Malachi, I believe it's three, or Malachi, I think it's three and four, or four and five, towards the last two couple chapters in the book of Malachi anyway, okay? Um, and you link those two verses in with Isaiah 40 and it will outline why and how the whole John the Baptist and Elijah dynamic makes sense. He came in the spirit of Elijah, but he wasn't Elijah. And this is how Elijah is going to come back again for the second coming of Christ, etc. All that kind of stuff. So, this is my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is down below in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks and take care.